I'm John Kinniston and this is Love Ultras episode 13. Just a little update on my situation. I'm still not running, which is uh, a bit hard to take, but uh, I've decided I really want to try and get it right. And um, I've got an appointment in a few weeks time with the uh, podiatrist to sort out the insoles. So hopefully I'll be able to get a new pair of insoles, which I think is what's, what, what basically has caused the injury. Um, so really, I must admit, I'm just writing off the rest of this year and uh, I'm going to start building up to next year. And what I'd love to be able to do is to be running three or four times a week by the 1st of January. So maybe in uh, late November, December, start running again and then have a few weeks to build up slowly and then think, right, 1st of January, I'm building up to the Northern Traverse, which is the big race that I want to do next year, which is the middle of May. And that will give me five months to build up to that, which... Um, hopefully will be enough. I wanted to keep these uh, Love Ultras going, even though I feel a little bit of a fraud in that uh, I'm not running at the moment, but I've got different topics that I'd like to uh, to do, so I'm gonna keep them going. Um, but I thought for this one, I'm gonna do something slightly different. In fact, this one and, ne and uh, the next one. My good friend, Cami Kennedy, is doing the, the Salomon uh, uh, Skyline race on Sunday. And uh, myself and Katrina are gonna support him. So he was round tonight to chat about our plans and his plans and how we're gonna support him. And then I've interviewed him and uh, so we've chatted about his race. So that's gonna be the rest of this uh, Love Ultra. And then I'm gonna take some video clips during the Sunday and I'll put that together as a little report of his race. So that will be this week and next one as well as we think about that. So this one's slightly different in that it's not about me, but it's about my good friend Cammy and his plans for running the race on Sunday. Right, so Cammy, uh, on Sunday you're gonna be doing this Salomon Skyline race, mm -hmm. okay? Which is really exciting. Um, so tell us why. Um, well, what attracted me was I've done a lot of walking, the mountaineering background, and I had this hike uh, most of the route, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And um, I've been finding that doing ultra running that I've enjoyed, uh, particularly technical part of the trails, and mm -hmm. I enjoy the downhills, uh, and this kind of really kind of um, uh, the race focuses on these kind of elements of that, but it made me quite attracted to it. Yeah. Okay, so this year you did the West Harlem Way, mm -hmm. which was one of your bucket list of races yes, to do, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. And uh, that went better than you probably thought, yeah, didn't it? That, you had, that, a, you had a great frankly, race, yeah, 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 so that, that was really good. So what have you done training-wise? That was, mm -hmm. what, 12 weeks ago? Mm -hmm. So what have you done between finishing that and, com and getting ready for this race? Yeah. I focused more on doing uh, a lot more mountains. Uh, I'm, I'm, my running, doing a lot of runs up the Kirkpatrick's, uh, the Ben Lomond. Uh, I've done a recce of the whole route of the Skyline, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and that's been good. Uh, but also, my, in the gym work, I've changed my gym work, but I'm doing a lot more runs on the treadmill at the 15 degree inclines, and I've used, uh, I've never used this before, but a step machine. Um, mm -hmm. It's basically rotating steps come around, and, and that very much simulates when you have to hike up the really steep slopes. Mm -hmm. So I've been using that uh, step machine, a uh, stair machine really, uh, for my quality session and uh, that's really helped to kind of build my leg strength up uh, to, to deal with, uh, it kind of simulates what it's like yep. and doing a big climb, so, so there's a lot more climbing yep. basically. Yeah, so on, on those reckeys, when you were doing something like the Curve Ridge, was was that enjoyable or on the Anakina or was that a bit <laughs> sort of scary? No, I, I absolutely loved it, did uh, it? Yeah, I did yep. get the adrenaline going because it, it got a bit exposed but the, the views are, are just stunning, mm. you know, they're, they're dramatic. Uh, landscape and, uh, and and I just feel like I'm in my element when I'm in that environment yeah. and, and that's that that's a real attraction to the race the yeah. these two parts of it particularly yeah and you had good weather for your recce's did you I had great weather and I had terrible weather oh, right. so okay. uh, so but you can get anything so you have to be prepared yeah whatever's going to come will be yeah good weather's a bonus yeah yeah okay so it's just a few days away we've mm -hmm. met tonight because um Katrina and myself are going to be your support team, yeah, so we're going to yeah. meet you at various places, which we're looking forward to, as well as watching someone like Killian Jornet running yeah. past and everything. I just hope you're not trying to keep up with him. So, yeah. I hope to beat him. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding, Killian. So uh, as you think about race, what are you looking forward to most about being involved in this race? I think uh, the coverage. Mm -hmm. and the Anakirch, um, just the, the, the technicality of it, the, the, the exposure of it, and uh, I think that's what's going to attract me the, the, the most to it. 
Um, um, and obviously be able to share it with other people uh, mm -hmm. during the same time, but it's, uh, it's it makes the experience even better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, have you looked at the start list? Uh, do you recognise people on it? Emily Fogberg, Killian, and, 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 <laughs> and, and, and just small names like that. Yeah. Uh, I, I couldn't believe it's such a star-studded lineup. And yeah. uh, uh, I mean, Killian, like the Usain Bolt of mountain running, and uh, to be running the same race as him, it's just yeah. an added bonus. So it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's quite a thrill. So yeah. I hope to get a selfie or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's uh, it's quite hard to get in this race isn't it you have to have quite a lot of experience yeah, don't yeah, you? yeah. Um, I was lucky in a sense because of my mountain leadership training and my mountaineering background uh, and my rock climbing experience that I was able to kind of tick all the boxes mm. uh, but you know having actually having had done the recce of it and uh, and, and I, I understand completely why mm. they, they ask people for that because it is so exposed and, and the last thing you want somebody to, to go up there and uh, you know to, to freeze uh, or even worse, they fall off. So mm. it, 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 is, it is important that they, they, they have that criteria because the race really kind of needs it, to be honest, I yeah. think. Okay, so we thought about some of the highlights and some mm -hmm. things you're looking forward mm -hmm. to. Uh, well, what, what's, what's your biggest concern, would uh, you say? My biggest concern is weighing heavily in my mind is uh, when, I'm, when I'm doing a recce, there's a, there's a couple of checkpoints and uh, the final checkpoint is the critical one before they let you go up the Anakirk Ridge. And, um, and, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of fearful that I'll get there in, in time because the checkpoint before that I worked out that actually there's only two hours between checkpoint five and eleven and there's no way you can do two hours between the two checkpoints. I mm. realised I have to be four hours before checkpoint eleven when I get to checkpoint five so I kind of worked that out so I'm, I'm, and that'll be way in my back of my mind getting to checkpoint eleven. I'd hate to get that far and miss a cut off oh, no. and, and not get up to an Akirk but they and they're right. They need six hours from that checkpoint to get to the end safely. So that's why they made the cut off at three uh, three o'clock in the afternoon, um, for good reason. So yeah. um, fingers crossed that I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll get there. Yeah, yeah. And then you've worked backwards from there, really, have you, to make sure you hit the other checkpoints in enough yeah. time? To yeah, yeah. The other checkpoint should be okay. It just, it just, did you see? It's trying to get the pacing right. You know, not going off too quick, too soon mm. because of the pressure of the checkpoint. But going quick enough. That you can't meet the checkpoint, so yeah. it's a kind of a kind of balancing act. But yeah. uh, I, I, I'll do my utter best, yeah. and that's all I can do. Well, I would say certainly having watched you, you know, we've trained together quite a mm -hmm. bit before the West Highland Way, and just seeing how well you run the downs, mm -hmm. I'm sure that will be that will be good. And also, I think the confidence the West Highland Way gave you, because mm -hmm. you did finish so mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. you know, from halfway onwards, you were just working your mm -hmm. way up the field. Mm -hmm. In fact, your support team was struggling to keep with you, weren't you, on a couple yeah, of, couple of times? Yeah, they were with me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I never predicted it. And I, I, I just said, that gave me a huge confidence. I find my running since then, it takes a load off my mind about, oh, well, I'll be able to do this distance, or I'll be able to run for this length of time. And now I keep reminding myself, well, I've ran no, 25 hours, you know, and I mm. felt good. Um, therefore, it's not an issue anymore so it gave me a new thing confident and it's helping to listen to my body a wee bit more as mm -hmm. well just to know what, what pace I can do mm -hmm. uh, but certainly going off um, steady and easy it, it reaps the dividend particularly yeah. the second half of the day so that's my plan for, for, for Sunday that you know, don't go off too quick mm -hmm. and the big climb out of Kinnock even and uh, to keep enough in the tank to, to be able to do the rest of the course at a good pace. Mm. What about food-wise and drink? Have you got a good strategy? Yeah, I've been using Tailwind uh, so when I'm training for the West Ham Way and it's, it's been really good. I've really, really enjoyed using it. I've used lots of stuff over the years, but probably Tailwind for me is the best uh, because it agrees with my stomach. So I'll be using that. I'll be using the green tea caffeine version of it towards the end. Uh, I find that that, that helps. Um, I tend to take a lot of snacks, uh, things like uh, Devon custard, tubs and mm. rosa cream rice and kind of nuts and seed bars mm. um, in the earlier stages but it's kind of sloppier stuff toward the end so I find that works well for me. Mm. Uh, um, what really worked well for me was ice cream on the West Ham <laughs> way back. I don't think that will happen. Okay. <laughs> There's not many ice cream shops in no. Glencoe to be honest uh, so yeah. we'll see. Yeah. And what about gear? Because um, again, this race obviously needs <coughs> to be very stringent mm -hmm. about making sure everyone has the compulsory mm -hmm. gear yeah. and the right gear. Yeah. I know you've, you're very thorough, so you've tested <laughs> all your stuff out. Yeah, yeah. So just give us a little rundown of what you're planning to wear and use. Yeah, I'm planning to wear them. Um, they're very strict. And, and again, uh, having been the recce, um, they're very strict about the footwear. Um, I have used 
hawkers, uh, speed goats. Uh, they've got a five mil tread. So I actually bought a new pair so that I've, you know, we're, I'm broken them in, but to make sure I've got a full depth of tread uh, because uh, there's a lot of wet grass here in the steep descents and it's mm. very easy to, yeah. which I did a couple of times because I was wearing slightly older shoes. Um, so that hawker, and the, the other thing, that one of the things they ask for is a survival bag, not a blanket, mm. uh, because it's a lot warmer uh, because we were, we're in the terrain which is really exposed. Um, so it gives you, buys you time if you need to be rescued. Um, the other thing was uh, an application for your mobile phone at OS Locate. So it basically switch the phone and it tells you exactly your grid reference, whatever you may be. Mm. So even if you're not a great map reading uh, skill, then at least you've got something to give you confidence. And uh, should you need to contact anybody, they can tell you, you can tell them the exact grid reference. So mm. uh, that's a, a mandatory piece of equipment. Um, waterproof trousers, stuff I wouldn't normally wear, but they are for it to be taken along uh, as well. And spare top, uh, not worn at the start again, because uh, I've, I've found out even the wreckage, you could be great starting off the car, but it's in your top of Anna Kirk, it could be blowing mm. a hoolie mm -hmm. and very cold. So uh, again, a good reason for why they want people to take that stuff. So yeah. it's slightly different, um, but uh, it, it's good. Yeah. They ask for that. Yeah. And they do have a, a bad weather route, don't they? Which would <laughs> yeah. be a shame if that you have to yeah, do that. Yeah, no, long, it's, a, it's it? a, the bad weather route basically misses out the, the, my two favourite yeah. parts, <laughs> yeah. which is the coverage and the anarchy. But um, I'm assuming from bad weather, they're not really talking about rain or temperature, it's just more high winds yeah. uh, because, um, particularly, you, you don't want to get blown off your stride one way or another uh, because there's not much uh, scope for, well, for that, particularly on the, the anarchy bridge, where it's quite narrow at points so um but, but yeah they, they, they have to they have to have a uh yeah. it would be a disappointment yeah. they'll have done that training and then they're yeah. doing a, oh, no. another route but anyway we'll take it as it comes yeah but the for the forecast at this stage looks quite good yeah, it's okay it? so, yeah the weather looks yeah. kind of quiet it's the best way to yeah. describe it but uh, if it's like that then that's great yeah yeah, and the final question, Tommy, uh -huh. have you got a time in mind that, that you'd like to get round? <laughs> I have 14 hours to get round, <laughs> and if I make it within the 14 hours, I'll be the happiest man in Glencoe. Right, okay. Is that the... Um, is that yeah, the, the 14 hours. starts at 7 o'clock in the morning, and yeah. the final cut off at Kinder Cleveland is uh, 9 o'clock at night, so it's for right. 14 hours. Yeah. And, and what's the total distance? Uh, it's um, 55 kilometres, 35 miles, and... Um, a lot of glad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we wish you all the best, Thank and you. Um, I plan to take my camera and I'll try and get some video okay. clips. And I'd, I'd like to do one of these afterwards as well, just to be able Before to, and to, after. Yeah, yeah, to see okay. how it went. Okay. So, I wish you all the best. Okay, thanks very uh, much. Look forward to supporting you. Okay, thank you very much, John. Okay. Thank you.